Hello, my name is Camilla and I work here at Fennessy Swamp in Augusta, Georgia. And I am going to be doing a story time with you guys today, but I'm gonna be doing it a little bit differently. Um, we are going to be reading Because of an Acorn by Lola and Adam Schaefer. And this is an amazing book that teaches us all about how our ecosystems are connected. And I am sitting at the pond right now, and so we've got some activity going on behind me. These are some birds called coots, and um, they're, they're playing right now. So try not to be too distracted by them. <laughs> yeah, we hear you. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Before we go into it, this is all about an acorn, right? I wanna show you guys we have an acorn here. This is a special acorn. It looks a little goofy. This acorn is an overcup acorn. And acorns are the fruit, they're the seeds of oak trees. And this is from an overcup um, oak. And the reason it's called that is because the cap of the acorn, it covers the whole acorn. So it's cupping it over. So this is our special acorn for today. So it's all about the acorn. Let's find out what happens. So, because of an acorn. A tree. And we have lots of trees here at Fennessy Swamp. And because of a tree, a bird. And birds absolutely love it here at Fennessy Swamp. And we have an example of a bird I want to show you. This is a ruby-throated hummingbird. So these feathers are special. They have something called iridescence. And what that means is that the way that the sun, when the light hits the feathers, they are gonna look differently from different angles. So I want you guys to see how pretty this bird is. And we have lots of hummingbirds that come here. They have that really long skinny beak and they are able to use it to stick it into long skinny flowers and they have a really long tongue so they can drink up the nectar. Because of a bird, a seed. All right, now, I have some really cool seeds I want to show you guys. So we collected a couple of seeds from a red maple tree. So I want you guys to look. The seed is at the bottom, the big circle down here. And the seed has a wing on it. And the reason it has a wing is because it is going to catch the wind with that wing, catch the air, and as it falls from the tree, it is going to start to spiral. Some of you guys may have called these things helicopters. I know I did when I was younger. All right, so let's drop it and see if we can see it spinning. And there it goes. <laughs> okay, so I also found a maple seed that is sprouting. And so basically that seed has sent out a little um, growth and it was starting to root into the ground and this is going to become a maple tree so that's a little baby maple tree right there and we're gonna put this back so it can grow all right so now that we've learned about seeds because of a seed a flower now we're gonna go look at a really cool flower. All right, so we found our cool flower and it is right here next to me. And this is called a passion flower. And I want to let you guys get in up close and personal because these are the coolest looking flowers in my opinion. And so you can see this yellow stuff right here, that's the pollen. And so when bees or other pollinators come up um, to check out the flower, that's what's gonna hit them on the back so that it, they get covered in pollen and the flower can move the pollen around. So I think that these kind of look like alien flowers. They're so cool. Let's continue. So because of a flower, 
a fruit. Now I have a, an interesting fruit to show you. And a lot of you probably never realized this is a fruit, but standing or growing right behind me is a sweet gum tree. And you can tell because they have these very um, cool star shaped leaves and these sweet gum trees, you'll find them all over. Um, and they produce a very funny looking fruit. And that is this sweet gum ball. This thing is full of seeds and that's what makes it a fruit. In science, the definition of a fruit is anything that helps seeds disperse or move around. So inside of this thing, there are tiny seeds. And this plant decided to make its fruit with these spikes and it also has little hooks at the end of each spike. And the reason for that is because that will help this fruit be able to latch on to an animal. So let's see if I can do an example. So in theory, if an animal were to walk by and lay down, this might get stuck on their fur and then they're gonna walk to another place. Maybe they're gonna shake it out and then it falls out and the seeds fall out of the sweet gum ball and then a new tree can grow. So interesting fruit and definitely don't eat it. It's not the kind of fruit we eat. So we've got our fruit. And because of a fruit, a chipmunk. Now I don't have a chipmunk to show you. They're a little hard to catch, but I do have a mammal that would also eat fruit that I want to show you. We have the skull of a white-tailed deer. They have very special teeth. So I wanted to show you guys, I also have some jaws of deer. So when the deer skull um, is left around, a lot of times what happens is the jaw breaks into two pieces. Now these are jaws from two different deer, so they don't go together, but you can see up here where it has broken. And that's because the very front of a deer jaw is very thin and fragile. And actually, if you look, deer don't have any teeth on the front of their top teeth, of their top jaw. So if you ever were to get bitten by a deer in the front, you would feel that it's very gummy up there. Um, but I wanna show you guys these deer jaws. Scientists can actually age deer based on their jaw alone, which is so cool. And what they'll do is they have to look for a few things, but one of the things they look for is the number of cusps, cusps, which is the number of tips on one tooth. So you can see this is all one tooth. They have the same root. And this one is about to fall out because this is a baby tooth. And this new tooth coming in is gonna have two cusps. So they'll look and say, okay, there's three there. So we know this is a younger deer. And once it only has two, like this one, see how this third tooth only has two bumps at the top? That's an older deer. And the next thing they'll do is they'll look at the colors up here. They're looking at the enamel and the dentine. And we're gonna get too much into that, but basically they're comparing how much of the teeth looks dark in the middle compared to the white on the outside. So the older teeth are gonna have a lot more dark and the younger teeth are gonna have less. So going back to the chipmunk. Because of a chipmunk, a snake. Wasn't that so cool? So what you guys were just seeing was actually a snake swimming across the pond. And um, that was just very lucky that we happened to see that while we were doing this book. So I wanna talk about snakes for a second. Um, a lot of you guys may know that snakes shed their skin. And the reason they do that is because they have to shed their skin as they grow. They're reptiles, right? So they're covered in scales, but they do have a thin layer of skin on the outside of their scales that's different from our skin. So when snakes shed their skin, they usually shed it all in one piece if they're having a healthy shed and they leave it behind. They don't need it anymore. So if you guys go out in the woods and you find something that looks a little like skin, it's probably snake skin. So I wanna show you guys, I do have some snake skin right here that we found in the woods. This one's a little beat up because we've been letting kids touch it for a little bit on our field trips. But you can see, this is actually inside out because they peel it off like a banana peel and they rub up against things to pull it off their body. And so you can see where each piece of skin was actually covering a scale. 
And so it kind of looks like a honeycomb. And then the scales on the bottom of the snake are different. They're these big, long, skinny ones. The skin actually covers their eyes too. Did you guys know snakes don't have eyelids? They don't need them. They have a special layer of skin that covers their eyes instead. So their eyes are always protected. And when they're sleeping, their eyes are always open. So that makes them a pretty good predator. So here's our snake. He's creeping up on the chipmunk. Because of a snake, a hawk. Now I wanna show you guys, we have a red-tailed hawk. These are um, a predator, which means that they will actually eat other animals. And they have those really big sharp talons that they use to swoop down and grab things. And these birds are also called raptors. That's what we call big birds of prey. And they have a very special um, thing that helps them hold on to their food. Um, when they uh, grab onto an animal, they actually are resting their feet when, they're, when their hands, their talons clamp together. It takes more energy for them to open their talons and release their prey than it does to grab them. Because it, like when we rest our hand, it's open, but when they rest theirs, it's closed very tight. So that helps them hold on to their prey for longer. All right, now let's find out how the hawk is connected to everything else in its ecosystem. So, you can see this hawk caught the snake and it landed on a branch and it knocked an acorn. So, because of a hawk, an acorn, and here's our acorn again. And because of an acorn, a forest. 